Hello there, welcome to Shine Tech's YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to talk about necrosis. So, by the end of this video, you must be able to define what necrosis is and also must be able to explain morphology and types of necrosis. So, necrosis is a type of cell death in which cellular membranes fall apart and cellular enzymes leak out and ultimately digest the cell so necrosis is a type of cell death now what happens is that the cellular membranes fall apart and cellular enzymes the enzymes which are inside the cell leak out and they those enzymes digest the cell so that is what we call necrosis so in other words we can say it is a type of cell death in which the tissue or cell is degraded by hydrolytic enzymes released from the dead cell okay so here the cell is dying okay and what happens during that death is that the cell is degraded by hydrolytic enzymes which are released by the same dead cell that is what we call necrosis so necrosis is always pathological so necrosis is always pathological and another thing is that it elicits a reaction which we call inflammation so it is always inflammatory so it elicits a reaction called inflammation so it always results in acute inflammation okay and another thing is that necrosis does not occur in dead organisms where in dead organisms we are going to observe autolysis and heterolysis okay so in dead organisms is uh, we are going to see autolysis and heterolysis but necrosis do not occur in uh, dead organisms okay so that is the definition of necrosis so let's now look at the morphology okay the morphology of necrosis so under morphology of necrosis necrosis is character, uh, characterized by changes in the cytoplasm and nuclei of the injured cell okay so the morphology we can classify them as cytoplasmic changes or nucleic changes the changes which takes place in the cytoplasm and the changes which takes place uh, in the nucleus okay so cytoplasm uh, cytoplasmic changes what takes place in the cytoplasm firstly is that a necrotic cell cells or the necrotic cells they will show increase in uh, eosinophilia. okay so we are going to have increase in eosinophilia that is observed in cytoplasmic changes of uh, necrosis and then also the myelin figures which we talked about in the in my previous video are also prominent in uh, necrosis okay so we are going to observe uh, my uh, myelin figures which are simply um, membranous walls which have been broken from um, cell organelles inside the cell so these figures myelin figures are going to be observed in necrotic cells then from there we're also going to see appearance of large amephas amephas intramitochondrial densities so these are calcium densities which are observed in the intramitochondrial so in the membrane of the mitochondrial we're going to see densities there so those are the cytoplasmic changes Okay, morphologic changes of a netro, uh, necrotic cell and then from there we have nuclear changes so nuclear changes of uh, of a necrotic cell a cell which are, has undergone necrosis so involves three patterns so the nuclear changes involves three patterns okay which results from breaking down of dna and chromatin chromatin so the first uh, pattern which takes place under nuclear changes is what we call pyknosis. Okay, 
pyknosis is the first change which is observed uh, in a necrotic cell where in this process we are going to see uh, a condensed uh, DNA and this DNA appears to be dark and shrunken in nature. So we are going to see the DNA condense into a dark, dark shrunken mass. So that process is what we call uh, pyknosis. Then from there, apart from pyknosis, we can also observe what we call karyohexis. Okay, so karyohexis is simply fragmentation of a pyknotic nucleus. So the nucleus which was condensed now under karyohexis, we are going to observe fragmentation. Okay, so fragmentation, and then from there. We, are, we also have what we call karyolysis. So karyolysis here, we are talking about the dissolution of the nucleus, which leads to what we call ghost nucleus. So here the nucleus is going to disappear. It's going to, um, you are going to see dissolution of the nucleus. So what I'm trying to say here is that if we have a nucleus, uh, a cell with a nucleus inside there, then in uh, pyknosis is simply shrunkening of that nucleus which is there. So what you are going to see is that you are going to observe the same cell and then in a necrotic cell under pyknosis we are going to see a nucleus being shrunken and it becomes more in size. So that is what we call pyknosis. So from pyknosis we are going to observe what we call what we call karyohexis where we are going to observe fragmentation of the of a py pyknotic nucleus so the nucleus this one which is con which was condensed what will happen now here is that you are going to see fragmentation so it's to be broken down into fragments like that okay so this is now under uh, karyohexis then from there we also have what we call karyolysis which is the last pattern which is observed so under karyolysis what will happen now is that the cell dissolution is going to happen. So nothing will be observed in that cell. And that's why here it is referred to as a ghost nuclei. Why? Because the nucleus inside here has been uh, the dissolution. So there, there was dissolution of the nucleus which has taken place inside there. So the nucleus has disappeared there. That's what we call karyolysis. So those were the observation or the morphologic changes which uh, takes place in a nephrotic cell where we have talked about the cytoplasmic uh, the cytoplasmic changes and then we have also talked about the nuclear changes okay so now let's move on now to the types of necrosis the types of necrosis so types of necrosis we have four types of necrosis the first one is what we call coagulative necrosis and then the second one is liquefactive necrosis and we have caseous necrosis and fat necrosis and lastly we have fibroid, uh, fibrinoid necrosis okay so now let's look at these types of necrosis in detail what is coagulative necrosis so coagulative necrosis is simply um is simply the type of necrosis where the underlying tissue architecture is of, uh, is preserved so the architecture the shape of the uh, tissue is of is what is preserved is not destroyed okay remember here the cells are dying so in this type of necrosis in this type of death uh, the tissue itself the architecture the shape of the tissue is not disturbed okay so the tissue architecture is preserved so in that type of uh, necrosis, this is what we call coagulative necrosis. And then from there, uh, the affected tissue, the affected tissue is going to take a firm texture. The affected tissue is going to take a firm texture and mostly coagulative necrosis occurs in all solid organs, in most solid organs such as the spleen, uh, the liver, okay? That's where it's going to occur. We also have uh, the kidney can occur there. And then except the brain. Okay. So coagulative necrosis mostly occur in solid organs except the brain. 
so in this diagram here you can see this part there uh, that is the part where necrosis has taken place coagulative necrosis has taken place and the shape of the uh, kidney has been uh, has been preserved okay the shape here has been preserved but we uh, we can be able to see that there are cells there which have died so that is what we call necrotic necrotic uh, coagulative necrosis okay and then in the kidney the necrotic area is observed to be wedge shaped okay so the area that has undergone necrosis is observed to be wedge like shape so that is all about uh, coagulative necrosis now let's look at um, another type of necrosis which we call refractive necrosis refractive necrosis so like in refractive necrosis the tissue architecture is not preserved okay so the shape of the tissue is disturbed here under refractive necrosis okay why because the dead cells are completely digested the dead cells are completely digested changing the tissue into a viscous liquid that is eventually removed by phagos phago phagocytes okay so here we have uh, uh, the tissue is digested and then um, it changes into a viscous liquid a liquid like uh, structure and then from there the phagocytes are going to remove uh, that tissue okay so that is the difference in coagulative the architecture is preserved but under liquefactive the shape or the architecture is not preserved why because the tissue is digested okay and then from there it turns into a liquid a viscous liquid which is removed by phagocytes and then this type of necrosis mostly occur in the brain and the pancreas why do they occur in brain and pancreas is because uh, of the hydrolytic enzymes in these organs so in the pancreas we have hydrolytic enzymes such as li the lipases and uh, other uh, enzymes which can can digest the tissues and that can result in liquefaction uh, liquefactive necrosis so in this diagram here we can see in the brain you can see in the brain there there is this uh, liquefactive necrosis and then the tissue there has been disturbed the architecture is not preserved and then from there there, there was digestion of certain cells there so that is what we call it liquefactive necrosis then from up uh, away from uh, liquefactive necrosis let's also look at what we call caches necrosis so under caches necrosis here we are now talking about the combination of coagulative and liquefactive necrosis caches necrosis is simply the it is the combination of coagulative and liquefactive necrosis and caches the word caches means cheese like so meaning the appearance of the tissue will be like cheese like okay so mostly this is encountered in foci of uh, tuberculosis infection in foci of tuberculosis necro uh, tuberculosis infection that's where we are, we are going to observe uh, caches necrosis mostly and then uh, caches necrosis it is often mostly it is often surrounded by the collection of food microphages and other inflammatory cells so in this diagram here we have um, this tissue here okay so this tissue as you can see it is appearing like cheese like okay it is appearing cheese like and uh, we can see here on this part it is cheese like and this is what we call caches necrosis so what you should know is that is the combination of coagulative and liquefactive necrosis then we also have what we call fat necrosis fat necrosis so fat necrosis simply refers to the focal areas of fat destruction okay here we are talking about now fat destruction 
uh, fat, another fat necrosis, the membranes of fat cells are liquidified, are liquidified and the released fat acids combine with the calcium. So the released fat acids combine with calcium to produce a visible chalky white area. Okay, so the first thing what happens is that the membrane of fatty cells, okay, fatty cells are liquidified. And then when the membranes of fatty cells are liquidified, what will be released is what we call fatty acids. And now these fatty acids combine with calcium and the result will be a visible chalky white area under that tissue and that is what we call fat necrosis so we're going to see fatty we're going to see chalky uh, chalky white areas like in this picture here we can see this is the omentum and we have those white chalky like uh, structures there that is what has uh, what has happened there is uh, what we call fat necrosis some fatty cells uh, are dead in those areas and we have the combination of fatty acids and calcium which forms what we call a visible a chalky white area now that process is what we call fat saponification fat saponification that process is what we call fatty saponification so that is all about fat necrosis okay so we also have the uh, another type of necrosis which is called fibrinoid necrosis, fibrinoid necrosis. So under fibrinoid necrosis, what happens is that um, mostly this type of necrosis occurs in immune reactions. It occurs in immune reactions in which complexes of antigens and antibodies are deposited in the walls of the blood vessel. So we have a blood vessel and then we have these antigens and antibodies which are part of the immune immune system they are deposited on these walls of the blood vessel okay and then what will happen is that um, this wall of uh, the blood vessel will be inflamed okay is will be inflamed and what will happen is that the layer of the blood vessel will appear pink in color so what is happening here is that we have these antigens. These antigens may be uh, come from mostly they come from bacteria or foreign microbes, and then we have antibodies which are produced by our cells, the immune cells in the body, and these antibodies are meant to fight these antigens. Okay, so these antibody-antigen reactions if they are subjected to the wall of the blood vessel there might be destructions of certain cells there and that will cause uh, will result in a pinky color in the water in the blood vessel okay so such kind of necrosis where these cells are dying and the color of the cells become pink that is what we call fibrinoid necrosis and mostly this kind of or uh, this type of Necrosis is observed in vascular vasculitis. Vasculitis is simply inflammation of blood vessels. Okay, so that's all uh, about uh, necrosis. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your comment in the comment section below.